This lesson deals with node voltage analysis with dependent sources. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in Chapter 4 starting on page 7. The neural analysis inspection techniques that we develop for passive circuits can be applied to active circuits if we can take into account the additional constraints caused by the dependent sources. Maybe the best way to illustrate this is through several examples. Okay, consider the circuit below that has one independent current source, one dependent current source, and three resistances. Suppose we want to solve for the voltage at the output and then the current. Because this circuit contains only current sources, we could use our inspection technique for nodal analysis. Well, the dependent current source is a current source. We can apply exactly the same algorithm. Set up uh, the number of our unknown node voltages, in this case two, a blank two by two matrix. What's gonna go in here are our summation of conductances. It goes on the left-hand side of the equation are the currents entering each node. Node number one, I've got one current source entering here, I sub S, and my resistances are 1K and 2K. So I'm gonna sum their conductances. So the reciprocal of 1K plus 2K goes in row one, column one. And between nodes one and two, I have a 2K resistor. So I'm gonna subtract the conductance one over 2K. Go to node number two, and I've got, again, two resistances hooked up. So one over 500 plus one over 2K. We go in row two, column two. Between nodes two and one, we have a 2K resistor, so minus one over 2K. And again, we have the symmetry here with our off diagonal terms. Now, the current source that's entering this node is just one, and it's equal to V sub X over 500. Now this problem, I haven't labeled the value of I sub S, but we assume that this is a known, just like the resistances are. What I have in this example is actually two unknowns, V1 and V2, but I've picked up a third unknown, V sub X. If you go back and look at the circuit, node voltage one is V sub X. Rewrite this as V1 divided by 500, but V1 is multiplying this column, so I could bring this on the other side of the equation as a minus one over 500. Since every dependent source depends on some voltage or current in your circuit, and you can find any voltage or any current in terms of the node voltages, you can always do this substitution and then putting the controlling term on the other side of the equation. Now what I've got is, is a matrix that's no longer symmetric. I have the diagonal terms that are positive, but now my off diagonals aren't the same. This is one of the characteristics of an active circuit. And then adding up all of these reciprocals, I get these entries for my two by two matrix. Let's solve for V2, which is also V out. And again, you could use Kramer's rule. Put this into this column, and this times this is zero, and then minus the product of these two would be the determinant of our conductance matrix here would be this times this, which is 3.75 micro, and then a minus, a minus, a minus, so a minus 1.25 micro. I want up getting V2 in terms of I sub S, actually 1,000 times it. And of course, node voltage two was our definition of V out. And this by Ohm's law, I can find I out by taking V out and dividing by 500. And so dividing 1K times I sub S by 500, I get the value of I out in terms of I sub S. So again, one of the properties of our linear circuit is that the ratio of any output to any input is a constant. Look at another example. This is called a positive summer. Here I've got two voltage sources and one current source and one, two, three, four, five resistances. Let's find the voltage V out here. Now to use our inspection technique, we have to have all current sources. So we could do a source transformation on these two voltage sources and we'd have a circuit that has just current sources in it, although one of them is dependent. And we could use our inspection algorithm again to start the problem. We're doing the first transformation, we taking the voltage V sub S1 and dividing by 1K, voltage V sub S2 and dividing by 3K. Give me this term here. And I got the parallel resistances associated with those voltage sources. My controlling current is over here, and it's going to get multiplied by 50 over here. So I have a circuit that has only resistances and only current sources. So I can set up a blank matrix. I have two node equations, V1 and V2, I'll call them. We're going to sum the conductances at node 1. So that's 1 over 1K, 1 over 3K, 1 over 100K, 1 over 1.3K. We nodes 1 and 2, I have a 1.3K resistor, so the negative of that. I have two current sources entering the node the V sub S1 divided by 1K and the V sub S2 divided by 3K. Go to node two. I just have two resistors connected here, so I'm gonna sum the conductances, one over 1.3K and one over 3.3K. And then between nodes two and one, I have the same resistor, so minus one over 1.3K. But now I've got my dependent source during node two. It goes into row two, column one on the left-hand side of the equation is just the currents entering, in this case, node two, which is 50I sub B. I just take these now and 
take the reciprocals and add them together. That's what I've got for the entries. And again, I've got a symmetric matrix. But again, I've picked up an extra unknown here. Again, I'm assuming that my inputs VS1 and VS2 are known. All my resistors are known. And the unknown quantities here are V1 and V2, but now I've got this extra one, 50 IB. But what is I sub B? It's just simply node voltage one minus node voltage two divided by 1.3K. I'm gonna multiply that by 50 and bring it over on the other side of the equation. So let's take this ratio and let's multiply it by 50. Take the reciprocal here and get 0.7692 milli and then multiply that by 50. I've got 38.462 milli times V1 and then minus the same value times V2. Now when you bring this on the other side of the equation, you're gonna change the sign of these two terms. Column one is, is associated with V1 and column two with V2. So the negative of this when I put this on the other side of the equation. So that's what's showing up here. And this will then get be multiplied by another minus sign, puts this plus over here. I've got my matrix in terms of my controlled source. Solving for V out here is, is also node voltage two. So it's gonna bring this over into column two. And now that determinant over this determinant would be my value of V out. This times this is zero, and then I'll have minus this, which is plus 39.231 milli times this summation with my voltage sources divided by their source resistances. And I have this times this, that's these two here, minus this times this, which are these two. Multiplying all that out, I get something times VS1 and something times VS2, difference of two terms here. And doing the algebra on that, I've got 0.734 times V sub S1 and 0.245 times V sub S2. Yeah, my output depends on my inputs that's proportional to it. I've got two different weighting factors on my two inputs. So I'm summing these signals multiplied by a scale factor. Let's look at another example. Suppose that I have a voltage controlled source where I can't do a source transformation to convert it to a current source. So I can't use my inspection algorithm, but I could just go back to Kirchhoff's voltage laws and current laws and figure out what's going on in my problem. Let's see if we can solve for V out here in terms of our resistors and then our controlling variable. And again, these are considered to be known. My value of my R's and then this term mu here. And likewise, this is considered to be known, but I'll just leave it as an unspecified voltage because any voltage out is in terms of the input. So I have two unknown node voltages here, this node and this node. So I'm gonna need two equations, but I have a constraint here. I have V sub X is between V sub S and V out. So I have one equation constraining the variable V sub X in terms of the node voltages in my circuit, although one of them is considered to be known. So V sub X is V sub S minus V out. I need a second equation. So I can sum the currents at this node, this node, or this node, but these nodes have a voltage source hooked up to them, although they're different kinds of voltage sources. The current that's in here is not with some type of a relationship like Ohm's law. So I can solve for this, but it's just another unknown. I'm gonna sum the currents at this output node here. Let's just let the currents leave the node and then I'll have nothing entering in terms of current, and I'll just sum the current that way. So what's this current here? This is gonna be V out minus mu V sub X divided by R2. This current is V out divided by R sub L, and then this current here is V out minus V sub S divided by R sub X. So here's that equation. Let's just take the reciprocal of this as G2, G sub L, and G sub X. And then here's our second constraint that V sub X is V sub S minus V out. So I can substitute in or V sub X right over here. And so here's V out and then minus mu times this would be minus mu times V sub S and then minus mu times a minus V out. And then the other terms just come back down over here. I'll group all the things that multiply V zero together. So I have G two times V zero. I have G two times mu V zero. And I have G sub L times V zero. And I've got G sub X times V zero. All the things that multiply V sub S, here I've got a minus mu times G2, and then here I've got a minus G sub X. I'll bring that minus sign out in front just as mu G2 plus G sub X. And I can solve for V out in terms of V sub S. Let's put this on the other side of the equation, bring that over here and bring this over here, and then I can take V out, divide by V sub S, or do it in terms of V sub S. I'll just bring this term over here. And so here's this term and here's this term. So the output voltage depends on the input voltage and then the resistor values and the control sources gain factor. Some examples of node voltage analysis with dependent sources. 